Oh. <laughs> Barely. <Okay. alive. laughs> Got it. Hey, Davika, it said recording in progress, and you could leave the meeting if you want to. Not Davika, sorry, um, Keely. You yeah. Don't worry about the recording thing. Just leave the meeting, and you're good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna trim it, trim everything extraneous off. I know. <laughs> so don't worry. Recording in progress. Thank you. That's a voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you get a chance, change your name down below just so that we know who you are. Uh, just your first name is awesome. Or if you're with a group, um, you could say your name and what district you're from if you want. Hi, Karina. Hi, Sandra. Hey, Melissa. Oh, this is going to be so fun. Everybody's like... Hey, Lisa. Oh, there's Mary. I've even got my Kahoot all ready to go. Just need the pin. What do you mean Kahoot? Are we doing a Kahoot tonight? No. No, Are we not? that's tomorrow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never this mind. Regular trivia. Let me get some paper. <laughs> this is regular trivia. Okay. Uh, now, did I see Mary Locke there? I did see Mary. Hello, Mary. Can you hear us, Mary? I'm not sure she can hear us. So begins the seance. Can you hear me, Mary? Are you on the other side? Um, oh, good. And Brian, are you there? Just checking for all my people who are presenting this evening. <laughs> I am here. All right. Thanks, Brian. We're just trying to make sure Mary can hear us. Do we have a rough count of how many people might come? Joseph said um, 40 earlier this morning, but there might be more now. Nice. Yeah, that uh, there's good. 53. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, competition goes up. <laughs> oh, hello, Monica. Thanks Hi. for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Hello. How long was this evening supposed to go? Um, it's the trivia is probably going to be an hour and the awards are about an hour. So two hours, <laughs> but you are welcome to, of course, fail out at any point during the trivia. Uh, if you aren't crazy competitive, like all of the rest of us <laughs> and don't want to stay. Oh, oh, I'm very large. Have, now. To, have <laughs> to drive the child at some point. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Um, you're just going to need to tell me who I'm spotlighting so that the um, recording has that person front and center. It would be Keely. Okay. Oh, well, you mean for the me award? Right now, but yes, there will be others. Um, I'm still not sure if Mary can hear us, so I want to make sure she can before we get started. Mary, can you hear us? Okay, good. Good. All right. That is excellent. Eh? What time are we at? 7 to 1. I know there are a few people that RSVP'd who are sitting together in this in the same location, like Chris uh, and Sarah. All right, well, we'll just give it about two more minutes so that we can make sure everybody arrives. Your headband reminds me of Studio Ghibli. Those little like. Oh, they're so cute. 
little dust mighty guy. Yeah, what we named the cat after, remember? Yeah. There you go. Okay, good. Um, I guess we'll get started then, you think? Else? How many people are here right now? 33. I think that's pretty close. Um, welcome everybody. Welcome to the BCTLA conference for 2021. We are so thrilled that so many of you are joining us tomorrow. And thank you so much for those who are able to join us this evening. We have an evening of celebration tonight with um, some of our award winners who we are so thrilled to be able to give the awards and to be able to honor them this evening. Uh, tonight we come together on the traditional unceded territories of many First Nations around this province. I am privileged to live, to work, to learn, and to play on the beautiful traditional lands of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations, the Lekwungen speaking people. Lekwungen means place to smoke herring. The coming of the herring was of great cultural importance to the people here on the southern tip of the island. I think it's fitting though that herring gather in schools to connect and to learn, and that we are all coming from so many different schools to connect and to learn today. We'd like to acknowledge all of the territories we are learning on this evening. So if you could please put your traditional First Nations territory in the chat, we can continue with gratitude. Kaichka. We're gonna start this evening with our awards ceremony. And I must say this year, we were so hard done by with the amount of incredible nominees that we had this year. We had to have a huge meeting about it because we have so many amazing TLs who are doing so many incredible things in our province. And especially during this pandemic in the last couple of years that has been particularly trying for our teacher librarians. Then the award winners this evening have gone above and beyond and are just a sampling of the amazingness that is out there. So if you are wanting to nominate somebody in your district, please look for those forms just after Christmas. They'll be up and we'll be accepting awards until uh, the March spring break. And you can um, nominate somebody wonderful in your district who's really made a difference. Tonight, we're going to start with our new Teacher Librarian of the Year awards, those who have been here for only five years and yet have somehow already managed to make such a huge impact. And a lot of them have actually stepped up to do work with the BCTLA, of which we are super grateful that they are able to do that. Um, Monica, I'm going to start with you to introduce our first nominee. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. You can hear me okay? You can. All as well? Okay, thank you. Well, um, my name is Monica Spreitzer and I am a teacher librarian in the Langley School District. It's nice to see um, some more familiar names than faces. Um, I worked for a couple of years um, at the district level and so I recognize a lot of your names and it's kind of kind of neat to see you. So um, I just wanted to um, take a moment to introduce Emily Huang. Very nice to see you, Emily. You're looking good. Um, it's an honor, actually, to introduce Emily as the um, uh, as one of the new uh, teacher librarians of the year. Um, when I visited, I, I visited um, Emily and her school a number of times, and uh, it was always such a such an incredible experience. First of all, because I'm secondary, and the life of the elementary school is um, so different, but especially the, the life of um, Emily's library, which is Blacklock Elementary in Langley. Um, her library is so warm and so welcoming and she's incredibly artistic and she, um, and she does uh, themes that actually three times her, her annual library theme became the theme for the entire school. Um, so one, the year I was there, visiting uh, the theme was Harry Potter so the the students were all in uh, they were sort of in house teams and the entire school participated and I just thought it was such a good example of how um, the the librarian the teacher librarian and the learning commons 
can be um, such a central part of the school, not just for the educational practice of the school, but also as a, for us with a real sense of community and um, the social life of the school. So um, what I don't, not following my notes at all, sorry. Um, Emily is passionate about literacy. She's run, uh, uh, created and run uh, K to five literacy events like uh, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego uh, and Clue Game, which is a lot of fun. She also really stepped up as, as, as we already talked about um, during COVID, especially with her community being fairly limited in terms of digital uh, access to digital books. Um, she just did an outstanding job during the pandemic of supporting her staff and her students, finding ways, creative ways to make sure that her kids were still not just reading, but reading quality literature. So she's, she got involved heavily in um, uh, sort of her, her website, um, providing read alouds on there and just ways for kids to access books and even physical books, you know, the whole wiping down of books and, and delivering and just making, making sure that kids can, can read. Um, so I thought it was pretty inspiring. Um, Emily is also really, um, involved in the larger world of, of teach, the teacher librarian world. And I think a lot of you already know that. She, in our district, has been our chapter coordinator for at least four years. I think it might be more now. Um, and some of those years while she was working on her master's degree and working full time, so uh, super committed. And um, she also has quite a social media presence. And uh, she's on Twitter and you can follow her. She's, ad she's uh, interested in advocacy for teacher librarians very much. Um, so she kind of is the full package, uh, uh, has all, all the, ticks all the boxes um, in the teacher librarian world. She's working on a diversity audit. Um, and there's just always something new that she's, that she's doing, something that she wants to make sure um, she can make her library better and better and better, and she does. So um, having said that, that's probably more than I should have said. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce Emily. Hi, thank you so much for this award and thank you, Monica. Um, as you all know the saying, uh, you're only as good as the people around you. And uh, I feel truly blessed to be have this amazing TL community. I'm not only at my own district, but here and at my own school at Blacklock that always inspire me to um, go big and be better. And I just hope that TLs will continue to advocate, advocate, advocate for their roles in schools because I just truly believe that we are and we can be and we should be the heart and soul of our schools. So thank you very much. Yeah, Emily. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you for that. And we we are all applauding you silently uh, from in between everything. So even if you can't see us all, we are applauding you. And uh, we're so pleased to have you uh, with us at BCTL8 as well. And can't wait to, to work more with you and get to see you in person at some point. That would be wonderful. So Congratulations, your school is really lucky. Uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Sarah Weatheredge, who is going to introduce our other new BC Teacher Librarian of the Year Award. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Weatheredge, and for 20 years, I was teacher librarian here at New West Secondary. And it is with great pride and joy that I introduce one of our BC New Teacher Librarians of the Year, Jenny Chang teacher librarian here at New West Secondary. I first met Jenny seven years ago when she was hired as a TTOC and a very part-time band teacher here at NWSS. At the end of the contract, Jenny went to South Korea to teach for a year, but returned in 2016 to work, as, work at FW Howie as the music teacher. She was also hired at Connaught Heights as an info tech prep teacher. She continued on at Knott Heights as a music teacher and in 2018 added the position of teacher librarian at Lord Kelvin Elementary. In September 2019, she became 
a full-time teacher librarian here at NWSS, and she became my teaching partner. When I had that first conversation with Jenny as my teaching partner, I told her of my plan to run as NWTU president in three years, and I had great plans to mentor her to be ready to take over the management of NWSS library. Unfortunately, 2020 didn't co cooperate, and I only had seven months with Jenny before the pandemic began. And because of personal circumstances with our president, I was going to have to run as NWTU president two years early. I really can't believe that Jenny didn't run screaming out of my library when I told her this. When I knew I was leaving NWSS, I encouraged Jenny to run as business ed department head. Now we won't go into the long and complicated story of why the library is part of the business ed department, but she did run and she did win. As business ed department head, Jenny helped plan the move of the entire department into the new NWSS building in January. And because the district found it very difficult to find a more permanent replacement for me, Jenny had to take on the entire task of weeding and moving a well-established library. We had been in the same building for 70 years into a brand new library, a task she has done with grace and dignity. In her short time at NWSS, she has mentored two new teacher librarians, become a department head, and has become teaching and has begun teaching in the Queen's University TL diploma program. She has introduced new tech into our library and has quickly become a true leader in our school. I am so proud of her accomplishing so much in such a short time. So please help me welcome my dear friend and teaching partner, Jenny Chang. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much for the award. Um, I'm so honored to receive this. Uh, while I've always wanted to be a teacher since I was young, becoming a teacher librarian was not exactly something I had planned. Um, however, over the last few years working in the library learning commons, I've really come to see how fortunate I am to be a teacher librarian, working at a job that I truly love. Um, it has been a steep learning curve uh, in this job. Uh, there's some extra challenges, like Sarah said, moving to a new building and setting up a new library space, among other things. But I'm really thankful to be able to work with such an amazing group of teachers here at New West. Um, it really is not something I could have done alone. And I want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to um, my fellow teacher librarians in US and especially Sarah Weathered and Christy Oxley, who I've learned so much from. And uh, thank you again for this award. Congratulations, Jenny. It's so thrilling to have you on board and to take on such a huge challenge like that is crazy. Um, so I'm sure Trial by Fire has helped create it's such an amazing librarian out of you. And we're so excited to have you with us here in our province. We're gonna move on to our BCTLA President's Award. Uh, we have a special award given by our president this year for a special contribution to the BCTLA, but it's not just the BCTLA. This is a special contribution to the entire province. And I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Johnson to tell us about the fabulous Rebecca Rubio for our President's Award. Hi, everyone. Hold on a minute. I've had some technical glitches this evening and hoping everything is solved. I cannot describe how happy I am to be able to tell you about what Rebecca means to our district. When I was a brand new teacher librarian, Rebecca was in contact with me very quickly and she has been an incredible mentor. She answered my phone calls, my emails and my late night text messages. <laughs> she never made me feel silly for asking even the most basic of questions. She was patient, encouraging and above all else, she was just very kind. It sounds like my experience <clears throat> being helped by Rebecca is shared by many. When I started to prepare this presentation, I emailed all of the teacher librarians in Richmond and I asked for their input. I thought it might take quite a bit of follow-up to gather the appropriate information. But as you well know, 
teacher librarians are incredibly busy and with a looming deadline, I was worried I might have to chase down responses. I shouldn't have been surprised. My, e my email box filled up immediately. People were eager to share their stories about what it is like to work with Rebecca. I do not have time to tell you even 10% of the feedback that I got, but I can report on a couple of themes that were repeated over and over, and I can pass along a couple of the sweetest quotes. The first theme, going back to something I've already told you, is how committed Rebecca is to connecting with new TLs and making sure they get off to a strong and supportive start. This comment came up repeatedly. Many referred to Rebecca as their mentor. Rebecca, I do not know how it is possible for one person to be the mentor to so many. And that leads me to the second theme. Again and again, busy, hardworking people went out of their way to comment on how busy and hardworking Rebecca is. If Rebecca were a circus juggler, she would not keep eight balls in the air, she would keep 18. Let me tell you some of the sweetest quotes, and I wish I had time for more of them. From Blundell Elementary, our brand new TL said, it is my first year as a TL in Richmond and I am utterly amazed at the quality of mentorship that I am receiving from Rebecca. She's not your ordinary leader, but passionate and committed educator who spearheads the way for us to be the best 21st century TLs that we can be. From Woke Elementary, Rebecca inspires us to be brave, not perfect. While she is pretty near perfect as a TL leader in this district, she encourages us all to try new things and take risks in our role. Our teacher librarian at Kingswood said, because of your advocacy and dedication, Richmond TLs are leaders in our school communities and beyond. Helping one person might not change the world, but it does change the world for one person, Rebecca. Our teacher librarian at McRoberts, when I think about Rebecca, I think about her commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion in our learning commons, and how much I appreciate that lens in her work and in working with her. And from our teacher librarian at Bing, she makes me feel heard and valued. She never makes me feel crazy, even when I know I'm being crazy. She always has time for us when she is the busiest person in Canada. Her advocacy for libraries, librarians, and the human race is unprecedented. I echo all of these from my own experience. Tomorrow, Rebecca and I are presenting a workshop on creating engaging spaces in the learning commons, and it will feature the renovation of my own library. And Rebecca, I just wanna recognize right now that you were the inspiration and you helped me take on that massive project. Couldn't have done it without you. But we'll talk more about that tomorrow. In the words of your colleagues, quoted but not attributed, you work magic with grace. You are always warm and supportive. You put your heart and soul into this work and you are a fearless leader. Rebecca, we are all really proud of you. And I am really proud of you. You deserve this award. Well, <laughs> I was not prepared for that, Kelly. That was um, that was beautiful. Um, thank you. I I'm still kind of peeking over my shoulder, thinking, are they sure when they picked to give me an award? Is that right? Um, so I'm 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 very humbled, um, very honored. I I need to say that um, I'm one of those lucky people that actually gets paid for doing what they love. I love my job. I love my work. I love the people that I get to work with. Um, when I entered this role, I'll never forget leaving a library that I loved in a school that I'd been at for 18 years and walking into my office and sitting and staring at the wall and sharpening pencils for a full day because I didn't know what to do and the phone would ring and I wouldn't answer it because I was afraid that there would actually be somebody on the other end and I wouldn't have a clue what they needed and I wouldn't have a clue how to help them and I remember a very good friend of mine saying you know don't don't wait for the work to come do what matters to you do do what you think you need to do connect with with what's important and so I closed my computer 
I grabbed my keys and I started driving and I drove to every single school in the district, all 47 sites in two weeks because I, I needed to see the people. I needed to, to, to meet the people because at the end of the day, what mattered to me was the, the people and those connections. And so watching that video um, and watching these amazing, passionate, hardworking, funny, amazing, fearless colleagues that I work with um, saying that it matters, that they see, feel seen and they, they know that relationship. It's, that's pretty much all I need to know. So um, thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for those beautiful words. Thank you for giving me this award that I'm still not sure I deserve. And thank you to those beautiful colleagues who, who um, inspire me to do the, the work that I do. I'm just super lucky. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And as Joseph reminded me, it's not just that we're lucky here in BC. Uh, people across the country, because you are working with so many TLs across the country right now, get to have your phenomenalness. And uh, we're very, very lucky that we get to mostly have you here in BC. Uh, but we are willing to share, I suppose. Uh, so congratulations, Rebecca. It, you are very, very deserving of this award. Uh, moving on to our BC Teacher Librarian of the Year, the Diana Poole Memorial Award. This year, uh, we have awarded it to Jennifer Arujo of the Burnaby School District. And Patricia, I will turn it over to you to say a few words about her. Hello, can everyone hear me, first of all? Okay, Jennifer, it is a pleasure and an honor to introduce you this year as BC Teacher Librarian of the Year. Jennifer is the teacher librarian at a very unique Burnaby Elementary School. It's actually two schools within one building, South Slope Elementary and the BC School for the Deaf Elementary. Now, I want to go to her colleagues who know her best. So some of these are comments from people she works with. From Teresa, the head teacher. The library at South Slope BCSD is physically centered within the middle of the school. It is, um, and within the middle of the school lies the heart of our school, teacher librarian, Jennifer Rougeau. With her tremendous skill set, she brings the library alive as a focus for all staff and students. From Katie Sanderson, a BCSD teacher. She goes above and beyond in every aspect of the library, from the smallest of details in Story Studio to school-wide events. She has learned American Sign Language and knows all the sign names of our students. From Deborah Borgenstrom, a South Slope teacher. Co-planning and providing a variety of resources has helped move my students ahead in their learning. With lessons started in the library, I was then able to provide more time and information in our class. From Julie McClelland, a BCSD teacher. Jen has demonstrated her exemplary collaboration skills when faced with the challenge of being a teacher librarian at two schools at once. She has brought these two schools together in various events throughout the years. Now, besides her stellar work at South Slope and BCSD, Jennifer is also a teacher librarian leader in Burnaby School District. She works with a team of three other teacher librarians who are responsible for administration, support, and training for our Destiny Library Manager program. And she's provided in-service sessions at district professional days, including last February, a joint conference with Coquitlam. Now the district tapped into her expertise last school year and they actually gave her some extra time to mentor several new teacher librarians. From the Burnaby Teacher Librarians Association, Jennifer has worked hard to develop rich, flexible, collaborative library programs, which serve as a model and an inspiration for other teacher librarians in our district who are moving towards the Library Learning Commons model. She's been a leader and a mentor, providing invaluable support and guidance to her colleagues during this difficult and unprecedented time. At the, the last thing that the staff did at South Slope as part of the nomination, um, uh, documentation for the reward, they created a Wordle. And here are the four prominent descriptors that came out of that Wordle. Thoughtful, creative, 
supportive and dedicated. And that is Jennifer Rougeau, BC Teacher Librarian of the Year. Congratulations, Jennifer. Wow, I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia. It's um, such an honor to receive this award, especially when I know so many teacher librarians uh, in the province and the ones that we've um, been introduced to tonight who are doing such amazing work. Uh, thank you to Patricia, one of my mentors, uh, for nominating me. And thank you to um, all the staff and, and students at, at BCSD, uh, BC School for the Deaf. Uh, I work at such a, an amazing school. Um, teachers who are willing and excited to collaborate and take chances with me uh, when I want to try something new and maybe push them and me a little bit out of our comfort zones. Uh, I have a phenomenal support for my admin from both South Slope and BCSD and um, they trust my professional judgment and um, fully support the library learnings common. Uh, I also couldn't do what I do without the support of my colleagues in Burnaby I learn, I've learned so much from them. Uh, they work so hard to lead from the library and model best practice for their teachers and students. And uh, I guess finally, I couldn't do this and I wouldn't do this without my, the students at South Slope BCSD. Uh, they love their library. Uh, they bring such joy and curiosity and eagerness to learn and being uh, their teacher librarian really is uh, the best job ever. So thank you, BCTLA, thank you, Patricia, and thank you to all of those who nominated me for this award. I'm humbled and grateful. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jennifer, and thank you so much, Patricia. It's lovely to see you as well um, here, and thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, our last award this evening is the Val Hamilton Lifetime Achievement Award, and this is going to our rec uh, recent retiree, which I think is pretty good to duck out during the pandemic, because uh, then you don't have to face all of this right at the end. So, but I bet anything that you miss us, Mary. So, Brian, I am going to turn it over to you to introduce our wonderful award recipient, Mary Locke. Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me. I will try and keep it pithy. Um, I'm so pleased that you are all here to celebrate the recipient of this year's Val Hamilton Lifetime, Lifetime Achievement Award. This is something that I have been anticipating for six years at my very, very first BCTLA conference. Uh, at the very beginning, I realized that there was a Val Hamilton Lifetime Achievement Award. And I leaned over to my colleague, Fred, and I whispered, we got to get Mary that award. And after that, I started talking to more of my colleagues in Vancouver, and they all agreed, oh, yeah, we definitely need to get Mary that award, because everyone kind of had a similar story. Mary was uh, the teacher librarian mentor in our district, and everyone I knew who was you know, my age, all had the same story. It was their first week of being a teacher librarian. They were in over their head. They didn't know what to do. Someone mentioned that there was a teacher librarian mentor. Call them up. Then Mary came in, answered all their questions, taught them everything they needed to know, made them into a teacher librarian. And not only did everyone, everyone I knew had a similar story, but you could really see the effect she had from the ground up. She had a, a, a fundamental impact on our profession in Vancouver. And that's kind of before any of us realized all the other stuff that Mary was doing. It was just the, the impact with the one-on-one -on -one impact. Little do we know that Mary was a stalwart in the BC TLA and the Vancouver Teacher Librarian Association. I think, I believe she was president of both organizations at one period or another. And she even wrote the uh, Vancouver Teacher, Teacher Librarian Constitution. More so, Mary is known for being um, a protector of our profession and we need one because you know there's always, well, we all know, people are always trying to chip away at our profession change it, take things away from it, make it less and less of what it needs to be. And Mary is, um, she's a gladiator. 
She's someone in our district who we are always turning to when we need support, we need advice. Because she knows she has experience, she has the wisdom, and she has the spirit because she doesn't back down. When Mary kind of announced or told us that she was retiring, I was terrified. I couldn't picture a Vancouver Teacher Librarian Association without Mary. It seemed like an impossible task just to get through stuff, just to stand up to the board without Mary. Luckily, she is still doing stuff with us. We, she is still supporting us. We, and that's great because we still need her. But at the end of the day, if our profession is going to continue the way it needs to continue, if it is going to provide the support to the students that we know it needs to have, then we are going to need fighters. We are going to need more Mary Locks. So Mary, I thank you from the bottom of my heart and no one deserves this award more than you. Thank you. Well, um, Brian, thank you so much for those words. Um, I guess I've always been um, testy or whatever, but I've never been called a gladiator before. And I embrace that with, uh, with, with open arms. I'm so happy to, uh, to, to, to hear, yeah, I'm so happy to have that uh, description. Because of course, we all have to fight for what we uh, for school libraries, for, for what we care about. So um, <clears throat> thank you, Brian. That was very sweet. Um, and um, I do have a few words to say that I've written down. Um, and um, before I begin I, uh, with, with the more formal remarks, I just wanted to say that, unfortunately, I cannot mention all the teacher librarians in my lifetime, <clears throat> excuse me, as a teacher librarian who've influenced me, who've helped me, who've inspired me. Um, I can't I can't mention them all because we'd be here all night, but there are so many. And I guess that's maybe one of the best things about our profession that we just that we, we just have to look around for a new inspiration and it's just right over there. So thank you very much to the BCTLA Executive Committee and to the VTLA Executive Committee for this award. It's very meaningful to me because Val Hamilton was a friend of mine. And um, she was devoted to teacher librarianship for her whole teaching life. She was an early adopter of technology, like right at the beginning, and she created the first BCTLA website. And she kept on managing the website after she retired. And I guess that's what gave people the idea of a Lifetime Achievement Award. So what makes us do what we do? I think the answer is because, and someone's already said this this evening, it is the best job in the world. Being a teacher librarian, that's it. It's just the best. I don't know about you, but I felt this from my very first day at the job. I was fortunate enough to learn everything I needed to know from my teaching partner who had benefited from the best years of professional development for teacher librarians at the Vancouver School Board. It's a long time ago. That was the 1980s, the years when Ken Haycock was responsible for school libraries in the district and had fantastic pro -D. I started later in 1992, and I was working part-time shadowing my partner, Joan Nazif, whenever I had a free morning or afternoon. It was Joan who taught me about cooperative planning and teaching um, selection and the mission of a teacher librarian. Much has changed over the years in terms of technology and facilities and in terminology. And of course, now we call school libraries learning commons. But I think that the essence of these three things, CPPT, selection, and the mission of the school library has stayed the same. We need to find teachers and students, provide them with resources and or lessons that they want and need, even if they don't know that they want and need them, and hook them and reel them into the world of information, culture, and inquiry. Students bring in their parents too, and the parents become our parent volunteers and often our advocates. And this, of course, is part of our work. We're connectors. We need to show and tell everyone in the community what school libraries can do and do do. Because somehow, in funding and budget crunches, school libraries are too often seen as less necessary than other services. Because we have such wonderful, deeply satisfying interactions with classroom teachers and with students, 
we are inspired to work insane hours during the year and during the summer with joy and with passion. And this leads many of us to take up uh, advocacy for school libraries. For me, advocacy started in that very first year. Joan taught me to connect with parents, the principal, school board administrators, trustees, public librarians, and of course, the local teacher librarian association. And it went on from there to becoming involved with BCTLA on the bookmark and in other positions on the executive, finishing as president from 2003 to 2005. It was the first term of Gordon Campbell and the BC Liberals. Right away, he started attacking teachers and education and seemed to be wanting to set up public libraries as a replacement for school libraries. Teacher librarians were very frightened and we all worked very hard to try to explain the difference between the two and to show how public libraries could never replace school libraries. We tried very hard to earn media attention. Of course, in those days, that meant newspapers. Many TLs contacted their local newspapers and explained the problems in school library funding in many newspaper articles. There were lots of ups and downs. For a while, we thought that we had reached a tipping point. School libraries were actually mentioned by TV journalists during the 2005 provincial elections. About that time, BCTLA executive kindly gave me the Malcolm Gladwell book, The Tipping Point, expressing the hope, which I unfortunately left in another room, but anyway, expressing the hope that school libraries were once again on their way up. Unfortunately, it was not quite the case. Cuts continued and inequities abounded and still abound, but we are still here. There are not so many dedicated, there are, so, there are still, excuse me, so many dedicated TLs out there as I've already seen this evening, both seasoned and newbies. You all continue to make such a difference in schools. Back to Val again. She knew that I was a little overwhelmed by the job of chairing the Provincial Association and she helped me in whatever way she could. She particularly helped me with seeking media attention. She would read something in the newspaper about literature or about literacy or about funding for schools. And she would telephone me and say, Mary, I think it's time for you to write a letter to the editor. So I would do what Val said. So I and others learned to insert school libraries into the conversations about education. And I believe we can still do that today. So I would like to thank you all for this award. And I would like to humbly suggest that we all continue to seek ways to insert the work of school libraries into all conversations about education. Thank you very much to everybody. Well, that's amazing, Mary. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to all of our award winners tonight and for those who are able, were able to introduce them and present to them. Uh, we are going to wrap up our award ceremony. Again, I remind you, uh, if you have other people who uh, you would like to nominate, as sometimes it takes a couple of years to get the big nominations going, just like Brian said, uh, but we have so many deserving people and it makes our job as the awards uh, people difficult when we sometimes get so many wonderful, wonderful nominees, but keep trying and, uh, and help us shed the spotlight on some of the really amazing people we have around here. Um, I realized that I forgot at the beginning to introduce myself because I guess I need no introduction. Everybody knows who I am at this point. Uh, my name is Keely Thornton. I am your coordinator of special projects, usually the social things and the, um, the, the award ceremony. Um, these are my little bats, Donnie. Do you see them? They're great. <laughs> um, and I am going to be running the trivia this evening. So thank you to all those who came for the awards. If you would, um, if you'd like to stay for the trivia, um, that the awards ceremony is concluded at this point, but we'll be starting up the trivia in just a few minutes. Uh, you will need a piece of paper and a pen for this awards ceremony and a glass of something delicious, be it water, be it wine, whatever you would like uh, to enjoy while we run our trivia this evening. This is all book trivia and especially teacher librarian trivia. So you need to put your teacher librarian hat on for this trivia. So I'm